Hello, Algebra 1 students. This is Mrs. Yowd. Today we're going to do Chapter 6, Lesson 4, which is about exponential growth and decay. Please have your journals open to page 185. Exponential growth is when a quantity increases by the same factor over equal intervals of time. And exponential decay is exactly the same, except for this time it's going to decrease by the same factor over equal intervals of time. For the exponential growth and exponential decay function, I'm going to put them together for you because I think it makes sense to do it that way. So the function is f of x equals a. Remember, a stands for the starting value or the y-intercept. And then what you're going to do is it's going to change by a function. So it's going to be 1, and it'll either be plus or minus some rate. It'll be plus a rate when it's growing, a growth function. It'll be minus the rate when it's a decay or it's going down in that function. And then this is all to the power of x. So in this function, the 1 stands for like 100%. So if the rate wasn't there, then it would just be a 1 and it wouldn't change at all. So 1 is 100% of normal. And then you're adding a percentage or you're subtracting off a percentage from that 100 in order to find out if it's a growth function or a decay function. So let's do a few examples. I'm going to do an example of a growth function and I'm going to do an example of a decay function. So my, for my growth example, I have 1,000 and then I have 1.3 to the power of x. So what's happening here, let's say this is a population. So a population of 1,000 um, insects, for example, and it's growing at 1.3. So we always look, how far is this off of 100%? This is adding 30% to that 100. So that means this is a growth of 30%. For my decay function, this time I have the same amount that we're starting with. This is our starting amount of 1,000. And this time it's 0.7 to the power of x. So remember, we want to think, how far is this off of 100%? So 100% minus 30% would give us 70%. So that means that this is a decay rate of 30 percent. Some students get confused when they see 0.7 and they think, wait a second, why is it not a decay rate of 70 percent? Uh, remember, you need to think about what, how far is this off of that 100 percent. So this is 100 percent minus 30 percent gives us 70 percent. So that's how I get my 30 percent here. Remember, our original equation has a 1, which stands for your 100 percent, and then plus or minus the rate. Lastly, we have compound interest. Compound interest has to do with when you put money in a bank and you are letting it grow over time. So the money in your account is going to equal P, which stands for principal, multiplied by 1, which is your 100%. That's what you start with, with the P, plus R over N. So R is your rate. N is how many times each year it is compounding. And then this is all raised to nt. Again, it's the same n. How many years, sorry, how many times each year it's compounding multiplied by t, which always is time in years. Okay, we're going to skip to page 187. So let's take a look at this first problem here. In 2005, there were 100 rabbits in Polygon Park. The population increased by 11% each year. First, we want to write an exponential growth function that represents the population t after uh, 2005. And then we want to uh, use our calculators to find out what the population would be in 2025, rounding to the nearest whole number since it's rabbits. It doesn't make sense to have a partial number there. So let's take a look at what we're given. We have uh, the starting is 100 rabbits. So that's going to be our y-intercept or the starting value. The population is increasing by 11% each year. So uh, if we do our problem, so f of, this time it's not f of x, it's f of t, because they want us to have t years. So our starting population is 100. And then we, if we have uh, 100 plus the 11% is going to be 1.11. Since it's a growth rate, it's increasing, it's going to be that much above the 100% all to the power of t. 
So now we want to figure out when is what is the population going to be in 2025. So we started with 2005 and now we're at 2025. So this is 20 years later. So that means we're going to have our starting rate of 100 and then our uh, increasing by 11 percent and it's the to the power of 20. So I want you to practice using your calculator on this. You're going to be using a little button that looks like a carrot possibly, um, or you might have a button that has um, x to the power of n. So play around with your calculator and see what works. Your final answer should be 806. We want to round it to the nearest whole number. You're going to get a nice long decimal on this, but 806 is to the whole number. So 806 rabbits is my answer. In the next set of problems, we want to decide if it's exponential growth, exponential decay, or neither. So what we need to do is we need to do some division here. You want to have your calculator handy. Remember, you want to do the, the second number divided by the first, just like we did it in the last lesson. So this is going to be 30 over 20. And if we use our calculator, that's 1.5. Now we need to see if the next one is going to be that way. So 45 over 30 is also 1.5, looking good so far. And then the next one is also going to be 1.5. So since they are all the same and it's above 100%, right, it's going to be exponential growth. And it didn't ask us to find the growth rate, but I'd like you to practice that. So we want to look and see how far is this off of 100%. And it's 100 plus 0.5, so that would be 50% growth rate. Okay, let's take a look at number three. We're going to do the same thing. We take the second number, 40, divided by the number in front of it, so 160. So it's 0 0.25. And if we do the others, we're also going to get 0 0.25 on both of those. So since they're all the same, it is an exponential function. Since this is below 100%, this time it's going to be decay, so exponential decay. Now let's see how far is it away from 100%. So this is the same as 100% minus 75% would give us 0.25. So that means it is a 75% decay rate. All right, let's take a look at number four. I'm going to do 22 divided by 32, and that gives me 0 0.6875. Again, I'm using my calculator on this. Uh, and then the next one is 12 divided by 22, and this time I get something different, 0 0.54 repeating. That means that this is the rate is not the same. So that means that it's neither exponential growth or decay, so it'd be neither. I would like for you to try number five on your own. Find out if it's exponential growth or decay or neither, and also see if you can find the growth or decay rate. For number five, I got my, uh, my multiplier was 2.5, which means that it's greater than 100%, so it's exponential growth. Now, it's 150% growth rate because we start with 100%, and we're adding 150% in order to get us to 250%. So that's how I got the 150% growth rate. For number six through eight, we're just deciding if it's exponential growth or exponential decay and also to find that percent rate of change. So number six, it is less than 100% because it's 0.95. Now, how far off is it from 100%? It looks like it's 5% off because 0.95 plus 0 0.05 equals 100. So this one would be a decay, and it's a 5% rate of decay. Let's take a look at number eight. So I need to change this into a, into a decimal. So point, because that'll help me know how to do this one. So this is the same as 0 0.75 to the power of t. If you forget how to change things into decimal, remember, 3 over 4 is the same as 3 divided by 4. So if you do 3 divided by 4 in a calculator, you would get 0 0.75. I would like for you to finish numbers 7 and 8 on your own. For number 7, I got growth, and it's an 8% growth rate because it's 8% above 100%. And for number 8, it's a decay, 
and it's 25% off of 100 because that would be give me 0.75, so 25% decay rate. In exercises 9 and 10, we want to write a function that represents the balance after t years. This is going to be using the compound interest formula that I gave you on the previous page. So here's my formula. Remember, P stands for principal. That's how much you start with. R is the rate that it's being compounded. N is how many times per year it's being compounded. And T is the number of years. So on number 9, we have 3,000 for the principal. And then we have 1 plus my rate is 6%. Now I need to change that to a decimal. So I move my decimal place over. So it's 0 0.06 over my how many times per year. It's compounded quarterly. Quarterly means four times per year. So I'm going to put a four here. And I, then I do to the power of my quarterly again, so 4t. So that's the function of t equals that. Uh, number 10, go ahead and do number 10 on your own. This time it's compounded monthly. So, so think about what that's going to be instead of a four, like we did in number nine. All right, so you should have gotten 5,000 for the principal. And then point, or sorry, 7.2% is 0 0.072. Make sure you did that right. Divided by 12, because there's 12 months in a year, all to the power of 12t. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.